Okay, let's look at some camera settings very quickly. Now, we're not gonna go into detail. Every camera, every brand, every model is a little bit different. That's something you need to remember. Not every camera is the same, but I'm just gonna touch on some of the basic key points of the cameras that we have in the studio and that are similar to all video cameras. We're gonna look at exposure, resolution, frame rate, and the output. Just a few ideas that are very common in the cameras. First, before we go on with the camera, we look at the LED light. And the LED light, if you buy more up-to-date or a little bit more expensive, they often have some controls on them. One of the controls you can see here is this dial. And this dial can be moved to change two things. It can change the brightness and it can change the temperature. So the brightness is here, and right now it's at 100%. So that means this LED light is at the brightest possible it can be. The second is this number here, which is in K, or Kelvin. That's temperature. So 4,500 or 4,500 degrees K means the temperature of the light. Now you can go ahead to the wiki and you can look up light temperature, because light temperature does not really mean how hot it is. It means it, along a scale of its bright, it's not its brightness, it's kind of color. So it has, it has different shades of color depending on that K value. So maybe for example your phone or your computer at night can change its color temperature to be a little bit more blue, is it? Or a little bit uh, less white, a little bit less bright, a little bit less, is it less blue? I can't remember what it is. So it takes away some of the color that will make you stay awake. That's the color temperature. So it's not really the temperature as in making you feel hot or cold, it's the visual temperature of it. Okay, so those lights have that temperature control. Why is that important for a camera? Because your camera also is very important in getting the right kind of color temperature. So here's a typical camera. This is a Sony camera that we have in the studio. And most Sony cameras follow this, although different models, again, can be different. And if we just look on the outside of the camera, what are some of the important buttons we see? Now remember, when you're using a camera, any camera, even, a, even a, a, an amateur camera or a still photo camera, some buttons are on the outside, but lots of controls are on the inside, inside the menus, inside the software. So why would some controls be on the outside and some controls be on the inside? Well, controls that are on the outside on buttons, they must be really important. The buttons on the outside are the most important, the most often used controls. So these are the things you really must know. You don't know these, you don't know the most important things of the camera. So what do we see on the camera? Well, the first thing we see is obviously these rings here. So this is the focus ring, and this is the zoom ring, and this is the f-stop ring. So the focus, the zoom in and out, and then changing your exposure, your f-stop here. Now these are manual. In some cameras, you do not have the ring you can touch with your hands. You have to use a small dial. And in some cameras, you don't have this at all. It's totally automatic. But in professional cameras, you'll always have something like that. The next thing we look at is, down here we have a couple buttons, and one of the buttons is gain. So what is the gain? The gain means how sensitive to the light the camera is. So if you turn the gain high, you can film in more darker locations. If you turn the gain low, you need more light. So why would you not just always use the gain very high, high sensitivity? Why not? Because as your sensitivity goes up, the quality of your picture goes down. And in video especially, you get something called noise, where the dark areas look kind of jittery, unclear, and even the light areas can look strange and unclear. Now, if that's the look you want and you like that, then that's fine, that's perfect. You could probably turn up today's cameras to high and shoot in a very dim room with no light, so just moonlight sometimes. Some cameras are so sensitive, but the quality of the picture will definitely be lower. So 
In our studio, we always try to turn the gain down as much as possible. So we want the gain to be low. Lower gain means higher quality in the video, but it also means you need to have more lights. The next thing we see here is white balance. Now white balance is a key point that's related to this temperature here. Because this temperature is the color of the light. This is telling us it's the color. And what's the white balance going to tell us? This white balance is going to tell us what is the temperature of white in this shooting situation. So I'm going to make a video inside the studio. My camera needs to know what is white. If it doesn't know what is white, it needs to guess. And if it guesses wrong, then all the colors it records would be a little bit wrong. So the camera needs to know what is white. Now how do we tell it what white is? Well, one way is we can use a white card. We can hold up a white card, something that's white, and sh uh, expose the camera, push that white balance button, and it will go ahead and it will tell us what it will confirm, hey, that's white. Okay, good. We're going to go ahead and film white. But usually in the lab, we have a preset temperature and we match the lights. So the key point here is my lights are 4,500 degrees. So I go ahead and I set my white balance for that also. So I've set the lights to be white. This is my white, my defined white, 4,500. And then on my camera, I go ahead and set that at 4500 too. Okay, so you can either use a white card or you can manually set your white balance. Very important not to forget, otherwise it's hard to fix later. And the next thing we have is shutter speed. So shutter speed is how, basically how long, how slow or how fast is your exposure. So if you have a very slow shutter speed, say 30, and that means that the exposure to the light is slow. The opening to the film, which we don't use anymore, would be longer. A fast shutter speed would mean shorter, so the exposure is not so much. So you can go to the Wiki and check that out. It's pretty straightforward in thinking that slower shutter speed means a longer exposure. Faster shutter speed means a shorter exposure. So if you have a longer exposure, what does that mean for the light? It means you need less light because more light's coming in. Every second of your exposure, more light is coming in. And so you don't need so much light. On the other hand, if you increase shutter speed, that means that the time of exposure is very short. If you did it to maybe 60 or 120, 120 would mean 1 20th of a second. 1 20th of a second would be half or half as long, half as double the speed of uh, 60. And 30 would be half again of 60. So each one of these is a half, 30, 60, 120. And what does that mean for the light? As you go faster, you need to double up your light every time. So. 30 to 60 is double the light, 60 to 120 is double the light, and the same is true the other way. If you go down, slow down, and you can have less light because more is going to come in. So the shutter speed is quite important. Every situation will be a little bit different if you're outside, inside, and in what location. And most of the time, if you have a camera that is mostly automatic, all of these things, gain, white balance, shutter speed, could be automatically set by your camera. And your camera can usually do a pretty good job of judging that, especially if you have a camera that's made to do that automatically, right? So you, you could usually trust that and get a good, good picture when you're outside. When you're on location, it's very hard to fiddle with all these things and set them just right. But when you're in the studio, it's important to fit get set them just right. You need to set them just right because the situation you want to get the best possible quality. So in that case we set all of these manually. Now for our studio there's one special consideration 
for the gain, that is keep it low. There's one special consideration for the white balance. In my room, we're using 4500. And for the shutter speed, I would like the shutter speed to be as high as possible. And the reason we like it high is because we're using a green screen. And when you use a green screen, a slow shutter speed would be easy to see the green when the person moves. So here I'm moving, you don't see the green. But if I move very fast, you would see the green if my shutter speed was slow. Because the shutter speed high is catching more frames faster. It's not catching more frames, but it's catching less light. And so as my hand's moving, it doesn't get blurry and you don't see the green screen. So if you're having trouble with your green screen that it's showing through or showing around the edges, then maybe you need to increase your shutter speed. That would decrease the amount of blur that's happening. Sorry, I did not explain that very well. But in general, in our lab, that's what we like to do. Here's another Sony camera. Now this is interesting because it's, again, a Sony camera. It's made for a studio. It's made to be taken out to location too. It's a very versatile kind of camera, but it has a totally different design on the outside from the other Sony cameras we have. Well, sometimes Sony tries different things. They test things and people can decide if they like them or not. But for us, we just need to see, does it have the things we need? So here we see that on this camera, you need to open up the LED screen and then inside you have these controls. What do you have underneath here? You have three controls. Isn't that interesting? Where did these three controls come from? Well, these three controls are almost the same as the other camera. We do have gain. Remember, we talked about gain. So lower gain is better for us for more clarity. We also have shutter speed. Look at that. Shutter speed is right there. So that's telling you shutter speed is very important. White balance is up here. So that's a little bit further away, but it is still a button. Then over here they have iris. Iris is your f-stop. Remember on the camera I just showed you, there was a ring near the lens. In that ring you could turn to make the f-stop change. On this camera, you only have one dial. And that dial, down here, a little tiny dial, is what changes the iris. And you need to push the button to decide which control is that dial changing. So if you press iris, then you turn the control to up or down your iris. If you do gain, then you move this control to up and down your gain. If you do shutter speed, then you use this control to up and down your uh, increase and decrease your shutter speed. Eh, not the best design in the world. Nah, it's kind of like a little bit silly and annoying. Of course, the bigger camera where you can touch everything is much better. But this camera gives very good picture, has good quality, and its price was much lower, so we bought it. So from your perspective, what do you need to know? It doesn't really matter what company, what brand, what model you use, you're going to have these key points, and they're probably going to be on the outside of the camera. White balance, gain, shutter speed, and then focus, zoom, and iris or f-stop. You're going to have all of those things for sure on the outside for easy access. Here's what we see when we're looking at the screen of our camera. And again, the outside has the buttons, but the screen will also have the readouts for things that are very important. So let's look here, what do we have? First of all, we have here our output. This is, what's the video we're sending out? And this is 1080, that's the resolution, and this is the frames, 30 frames per second. So we're sending out 1080 resolution at 30 frames a second. Here is our f-stop, 3.1, our exposure. Here's our gain, that's the gain. Remember the gain? We were saying I like lower is better. Well here we're at minus 0.6 dB, that's the lowest it'll go. So I've got it as low as possible. And what's this here? This is going to be your shutter speed. So remember, shutter speed is very important. It's right there on the outside, shutter speed. And what do we have here? This is going to be our white balance temperature. So this is the temperature that we're saying is white, 4,500. Remember, we line that up with the lights. So right there, you can see everything that's important. Very handy to get that. Now, how do, how do you get this to show on your little screen? You might have to go into the menu and make some adjustments because sometimes 
you don't see all of this information. So there's probably just a couple buttons to push inside the menus and you get all of this readout. Very nice.